in the dynamic world of real estate, very often government policies and regulations could shape the homes we live in and our property prices. It is not always about eligibility to purchase and stamp duties. Sometimes it could be as simple as definition of terms. And one of the important changes that took place with effect from 1st June 2023 is the definition of gross floor area or GFA, which I will explain shortly. Let me give you first a brief history of how GFA definition evolved over the years. Perhaps let me bring you back to your home viewing experience, especially when you're looking at older condos. Have you come across old condos, especially those built before 2009, that come with bay windows which you can't fully utilize? And have you noticed how newer condos these days are totally devoid of such bay windows? Or have you come across many of the older condos where you have gigantic PES or private enclosed space and roof terraces where you can literally play a mini soccer game or you may find planter boxes that take up space but are almost useless. And yes, behind every video, I have put in lots of efforts so that I can add value to our viewers' knowledge and experience. Do consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. It doesn't cost you, but it surely gives me a lot of motivation. Thank you. Now, back to where we left. Back then, developers were constructing balconies equipped with sizable planter boxes and huge private roof terraces, as these were not considered as part of GFA during construction. However, home buyers were charged for these spaces that were quite useless, thus adding to the developer's profit margin. So what happened is that in 2009 and 2013, the URA found it necessary to amend the regulations, incorporating features like planter boxes, bay windows, private enclosed spaces, and private roof terraces into the gross floor area of a development. Thus, because of this regulatory change, you see that newer condos built after the implementation have stopped incorporating bay windows and huge planter boxes or huge unusable roof terraces. Now, let's come back to the latest regulatory changes. In a nutshell, from 1st June 2023, the following changes will come into effect. A all government agencies' floor areas will be measured to the middle of the wall. B, all strata areas will be included as GFA. And C, all voids will be excluded from the strata area. Okay, let's not get too crazy about the technical jargons. In simple words, a similar scenario with what we mentioned has existed for aircon ledges, which before June 2023, are not considered part of the GFA, provided they adhere to a maximum width of one meter. That's why in some condos, you see excessive wasted space due to air con ledges. So with the rule change from June, 2023, air con ledges that are part of a strata unit will count as part of GFA. As a result, developers are now forced to rethink how best to optimize the use of total floor area for the apartment. Since they affect the maximum number of units that can be built and the eventual PSF price. However, do note that for the maintenance and security of aircon condenser placements, it should still comply with BCA's design. In general, most aircon ledges should be about 32 to 54 square feet. This will take up around 3% of total floor space. Next, have you heard of paying for airspace for properties with very high ceiling? Another change is in the strata void area, which is to be excluded from strata area computation. This effectively removes it from any GFA inclusion based on the redefinition. In the past, some developers have included strata void areas in their total saleable area, which effectively lowers the per square foot price of the unit. However, 
We must admit though that units with very high ceiling does feel very different and sometimes carry a sense of opulence. Now with the new rules, I doubt developers will have any motivation to build high ceiling units, especially for condos that are not in the luxury segment. So what's the impact to the market and potentially property prices? As the total saleable area against GFA decreases for developers, they'll need to now find new ways to increase efficiencies such as reducing construction costs or bidding land parcels at a lower price. That's the reason why we would start to see developers starting to bid for land at a lower price. But that doesn't mean that the eventual selling price would be lower than recent neighboring launches as their construction cost is now much higher and profit margins lower at the same time. But bear in mind though that bidding at lower price may not necessarily be the case all the time, especially for hotly contested land parcels. In other words, some of these costs may still be passed on to home buyers in the form of higher PSF prices. I hope this video gives you a clearer picture on the impact of GFA redefinition as well as explains why you may start seeing land bids at lower price compared to neighboring land parcels before the change. My name is PK So from Huttons. If you have made it this far in this video, why not give me a like and subscribe to my channel? Please feel free to reach me for any of your real estate needs. I look very much forward to seeing you soon.